Okay, I'm going to do you a brief uh, introduction uh, to corpora um, and corpus linguistics. And this set of slides is based on material created by Harold, Harold Summers, uh, and they're used with his permission. Harold Summers uh, was a, a professor at the University of Manchester in the area of corpus linguistics. So what is a corpus? Uh, as it says on the slides, you know, corpus equals body. It has a Latin root um, and it has a plural then corpora. It's used, the plural that we use is, is the Latin plural rather than, uh, you know, saying corpuses. Um, and it basically means a collection of text. And they can be written text, most commonly written text, but also it can be transcribed speech. So some corpora consist only of uh, you know, uh, text and some consist only of speech uh, and some have a mixture. And usually uh, it's purposefully collected. So people collect it for a reason, you know, they want to create a corpus of a certain type and, and uh, it's usually structured in, in some kind of way. So, you know, they're taking certain texts, you know, so from certain sort of parts of time or whatever it happens to be. Um, and it's usually but not always annotated. So annotated basically means that you add extra elements to the text uh, showing the, the linguistic markers so that you can actually search, um, you know, in an annotated text, you can search for uh, you know, all determiners, for example, or certain types of determiners because they're all labeled in a certain kind of way. And, and they're usually stored these days uh, on and accessible through computers. Um, and so, uh, you know, as it says at the bottom there, it's basically a text archive. So a collection of material that's brought together um, and used uh, for analysis. So historically, uh, um, it's, you know, corpora not a new thing. They've been around quite a while and they've been used for the manual analysis of, of, of large amounts of text, for example, analysis of Shakespeare, uh, looking for his use of colour words, for example, uh, or other kinds of words, looking at the way, you know, different plays are written. So, you know, is, is the Tempest written by the same person as Hamlet? You're probably well aware that, you know, Shakespeare, there are lots of questions about whether Shakespeare, you know, was, a, was one person or, or, or many. And it's also used for, for sort of you know, looking at, at biblical texts as well. Um, uh, the problem with, you know, the, 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 that way of doing it, the older way of doing it pre-computers was that it was prone to errors and it was also very time consuming. Imagine, you know, actually working through a Shakespeare text and counting the number of times he uses the color purple, for example. You know, and, you know, it's very difficult then to check in any meaningful way because then somebody else would also have to go through the text and also you know count the number of times that he uses purple um, you know very 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 time consuming so computers have introduced reliability accuracy and replicability replicability sorry <laughs> in, it's much faster to do it you can have much bigger uh, corpora um, and you know you've got no, new tools uh, for analysis. The concordancing software that we're going to use, for example, is is one example. So Harold Summers suggests here that uh, corpus linguistics is not a specific branch of linguistics. Uh, it's not a theory. It's a set of tools that we use to explore things like sociolinguistics and psycholinguistics. So we can use corpora to explore second language acquisition. Um, we can ex we can look at you know, the, the way that we can collect a, a, a set of uh, spoken language and we can explore that through a corpus as well. Um, a, a student um, you know, uh, here um, at Manchester was actually a, a colleague for, for a while. Um, he looked at the way that um, Polish people spoke English and, and he looked at that from a sociolinguistic perspective. So he interviewed Polish speakers of English um, did an analysis and wrote a thesis based on that. So, you know, it's uh, corpus linguistics uh, is a tool, basically. But what it does do, uh, what, what a corpus does is provide real understanding of, you know, how, how language is used at a particular moment in time. Uh, so we can actually look at it if we've got text, historical text, we can look at how language was used at a certain period of history. Uh, 
and it contrasts with that kind of very introspective approach um, that was was often very typical in, in terms of language analysis sitting there thinking about examples the kind of thing that we see teachers doing on a regular basis in classrooms um, when I was uh, you know a younger and, and worked overseas I worked in Azerbaijan and I worked in their dictionary department and one of my jobs was to you know think of examples of of the use of language and it was jolly difficult because quite often the ideas I came up with were not the, not the ones that they wanted they wanted examples of things that I just didn't know you know how it worked and I didn't have access to the internet or a large store you know a large library of text or anything to explore so very difficult for me to to, to find uh, examples sometimes uh, for the things that, that that they were looking for um, it relates to the relationship between, you know, uh, our, our latent knowledge of language, if you like, our competence and, and the actual way that we use language. So, so often, you know, we say, you know, language is used in a certain kind of way. These words are used in a certain kind of way. But actually, when we, we explore the language, we, we find that, that there's a difference. Um, corpus linguists are looking for trends, sort of, you know, changes over time in language. And they're interested in probabilities and, and not certainty. So they're not necessarily rule governed. And we, you know, there are lots of stories of, of the way that actual corpus evidence, uh, you know, contradicts our assumptions about how language is used, um, and uh, you know, uh, the, the, the difference between, uh, you know, uh, different bits of language that we, you know we insist, you know, actually categorically works in this kind of way. And when we look at it in, um, uh, in, in a in a, a corpus we find actually we weren't right at all so be prepared to to, to find evidence of that um, <clears throat> so what what does corpus linguistics do uh, we do you know people design and uh, compile corpora uh, they develop tools for analysis um, descriptive linguists use them to analyze lexical and grammatical behavior of language uh, for example making dictionaries I've always talked a little bit about dictionaries um, and you know, for, for increasingly these days, you know, you find that these kinds of corpora are used for constructing uh, course books uh, as well. So most of the big publishers these days have a corpus, and they use that um, in, in the creation of, of materials. Um, you know, so uh, as it says there, exploiting corpora in applied linguistics, language teaching, and translation. I mean, you know, we've explored some of the uses uh, in, in language teaching, uh, and of course, you know, you you can use it to help you translate as well. Um, you know, uh, the uh, I've mentioned uh, that corpus linguistics has, uh, you know, uh, um, a history in looking at, at Shakespeare and the Bible. Uh, but of course, you know, as we've said, you know, computers uh, in the 1950s changed all of that and made it very, very easy to do. So the first modern corpus, if you like, computer readable one was what's called the Brown Corpus. And as it says there, it has a million words of American English printed in 1961. Uh, comes from different types of text and was used you know, as a model uh, for quite a lot of, of, of other uh, later corpora. Um, and you see one of the, you know, the issues here is that, you know, the fact that this was collected in 1961. Uh, you know, and, and it was collected in 1961. It wasn't then collected again in 1971, 1981, and so on and so forth. It was just ex ex exists now as a kind of historical record. Although, of course, you know, they could go through the same process and collect, you know, a new corpus in 2016. So the Lancaster, Oslo, and Bergen corpus, what's called the Lob corpus, um, again, uh, that was a British English one, um, and similar in many ways to to brown or based on brown there's a corpus of indian english um, that, that was very similar as well now not everybody uh, thinks that corpus linguistics is is a good idea and chomsky uh, was quite critical um, of of corpus linguistics um, he thought that uh, you know, the idea was that, you know, we're looking at, you know, limited amounts of language, whereas as far as he was concerned, language was finite, you know, every time his you know, famous idea was that, you know, every time we utter something, we utter something new. Um, whereas actually, when you look at uh, language from a corpus perspective, you begin to question, you know, seriously question whether that's the case. Um, and, you know, so using a limited uh, corpus, actually, uh, you know, 
has its weaknesses and of course it does and and and, and that's where computing has made such a difference because we can have so much bigger um, you know corpora and, and we can make you know make better use of them um, so there are other uh, corpora the Lund London Lund corpus of spoken English so that was uh, the first corpus of transcribed spoken language um, and you know led to you know the beginnings of our better understanding of the way that spoken language works uh, you've probably heard of co-build uh, again you know large corpus a million words um, and it uh, was based around the work of John Sinclair who you'll find discussed in in in, in the materials um, you know very important uh, person connected with with language development move on to the British National Corpus <clears throat> you know and this this is a tagged corpus as it says there uh, with lots of tools available um, you know uh, lo lots and lots of uh, language uh, you know, but of course dated like 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 all of these um, and uh, you know it was originally used uh, you know for, for just uh, local work but you know at Oxford but now you know it's available nationally of course you have to pay for it but you know it's there and it's probably one of the most recent ones uh, that, that you can get at and we could go on I mean there's you know Cambridge have their own corpus as well um, and you'll see uh, that, that people like Michael McCarthy, for example, and Ronald Carter, uh, you know, who are co-authors on the Cambridge book from Corpus to Classroom, um, they use a lot of material uh, from from um, you know they use a lot of material from the the corpora to, to do their investigations. So that's it. That's a basic introduction, a little bit of history, um, and uh, brings us to where. Uh, we are now and, and what we're going to uh, go on and look at uh, in terms of our own collecting our own corpus and beginning to analyze it in certain kinds of ways.